Thank you. Good, good morning to all. And it's a, indeed a very great pleasure to speak today uh, at the European Economic and Social Committee. Um, Peter, as you will recall, uh, this uh, strategy from Farm to Fork that was announced by the European Commission in May 2020 is the result of a very strong mobilization across civil society in the years 2016-2019, when a number of organizations, non-governmental organizations, farmers' unions, consumer organizations, um, joined forces with academics in order to address policymakers from the European Commission, from the European Parliament, from the Committee of the Regions, and indeed from the European Economic and Social Committee, to call for a much more integrated, comprehensive, common food policy, as it was then called. And this uh, was finalized in a report presented in February 2019, uh, where proposals were set out for a common food policy for the EU. And indeed, I should acknowledge uh, that Peter Schmidt was present at the May 2018 EU Food and Farming Forum, where these proposals were discussed in a very collaborative fashion across a number of stakeholders. And throughout this journey to demand a common food policy, the European Economic and Social Committee was extremely present and supportive. Um, reference was made already to the opinion adopted in May 2016, more sustainable food systems. But in addition, in December 2017, there was a very important opinion by the by the committee called Civil Society's Contribution to the Development of a Comprehensive Food Policy in the EU. And in January 2019, a third opinion uh, titled Promoting Healthy and Sustainable Diets in the EU. Um, so why do we have such a broad support for the idea of food systems reform? I think it's because food systems face four crises, which I will simply recall before turning to the issue of governance. First, there is an environmental crisis the way we produce and consume food is leading to high levels of greenhouse gas emissions, to a loss of biodiversity, to uh, soil health um, being um, um, damaged um, and, and soils becoming unable to fulfill the function as carbon sinks. Secondly, we have a health crisis. Almost one in five adults in the EU are obese, and that rate has doubled since 2000. Almost 1 million people in the EU die each year as a result of unhealthy diets and associated non-communicable diseases. Thirdly, we have a social crisis. Almost two-thirds of the farms have disappeared from Europe over the past uh, 30 years. And the only farms that can afford to remain in business are those that are large enough to achieve economy of scale and to be competitive on global markets. Fourth. We have a development crisis. Um, the EU farm exports have led many poor countries to develop an addiction to cheap food subsidized by OECD taxpayers, exposing their own farmers to dumping and leading to growing dependencies on imports of cheap food from, from global suppliers. So that is, or rather, these are the crises that we face and that explain the urgency of the reform and the consensus around the idea that we need to change food systems for greater sustainability. Now, weak governance is part of the problem. And I, I have to say, I very much welcome the very encouraging comments by Robert van Rijssen. I think uh, this is extremely promising what we heard today, because we face four major governance issues, which I would like to highlight and which I hope the framework for sustainable food systems will address. The first is a lack of coherence between policy areas. For example, the Common Agricultural Policy continues to subsidize farmers, mostly on the basis of the surfaces cultivated, encouraging the production of large volumes of raw commodities, but this in turn encourages unhealthy diets, since agri-food companies can easily flood markets with processed foods that are mostly energy-dense and that are rich in salt and added sugars. So there's a mismatch between the agricultural policy we've developed, on the one hand, and the health objectives we are seeking to achieve, on the other hand. And this is just one example of the many inconsistencies we have between different sectorial policies that are not aligned with one another. The second challenge, the second governance issue, 
is a lack of direction. There is no long-term vision for food systems reform. So that basically food systems evolution is guided by short-term considerations in response to various crises or pressures from dominant actors guiding the evolution of the system. An evolution which is therefore heavily path dependent, especially since the main incumbents, the farmers in particular, have developed a huge dependency on subsidies. Probably four out of five farms in the EU would go bankrupt immediately without support from the common agricultural policy. So what is needed is indeed a vision, but also a roadmap indicating how we get there, a set of time-bound objectives with a clear allocation of responsibilities between actors and governance levels. What should the EU institutions deliver by which date, based on which indicators, subject to which kind of monitoring? What should the EU member states do? What should be expected from the regions and municipalities? And indeed, what can we expect from the various actors across the food chain the farmers, the commodity buyers and traders, the food processing companies, and the retailers. So that's the second challenge we, we face, it is to, it to provide such a roadmap. The third challenge is a lack of coherence across levels of governance. Um, and it's no um, accident if in the process of building proposals for a common food policy, we organize a number of city labs in Freiburg, in Montpellier, in Turin, for example. What we saw is that many attempts to set up local food systems, reconnecting cities to their rural hinterlands, providing marketing opportunities to local farmers so that they can directly serve schools, public administrations, or even individual consumers through short food chains and community-supported agriculture, all these attempts to build territorial local food systems were not sufficiently supported by the member states or by the European levels of governance. These attempts to build local food systems are often made impossible or even discouraged by a regulatory and policy framework that is still trapped in the paradigms of the 20th century um, that uh, prioritize economies of scale, long supply chains, and the industrialization of food processing. So, not only is it difficult for local food systems to emerge, in addition, it is difficult for social innovations to develop, although there is enormous potential in new business models, new ways of organizing the links between farmers and eaters by the setting up of what we refer to as alternative food networks. That is, in my view, the third challenge. It is to organize better this multi-level governance approach to reforming food systems. The fourth and final challenge is the lack of democracy and accountability in how we set up food systems. All too often, major decisions concerning our food are taken behind closed doors under the pressure of the most powerful lobbies who can translate their economically dominant position into political influence. Why is this so? Not because of corruption, and generally not by misleading or lying to policymakers, but rather because the large agri-food companies are the champions of the low-cost food economy that we have developed in the name of providing cheap calories to consumers, never mind the environmental and health impacts, never mind the impacts on small farms or on the global south, and never mind if what consumers do not pay as they check out from supermarkets taxpayers and future generations will have to pay in the form of subsidies or the loss of natural capital. The role of an EU Food Policy Council, that Tim Lang will discuss in a minute, is to create coherence across policy areas between governance levels. It is to promote promising social innovations to improve accountability and transparency, but especially it is to ensure that we remain focused on the end goal to transform food systems for sustainability while also ensuring that farmers are fairly remunerated for their work and that consumers have access to healthy diets at an affordable price. I would like to thank you again, thank the European Economic and Social Committee for their um, very important contribution to this vital debate. 
And I'm very hopeful that the future framework for sustainable food systems will deliver on those promises and will meet the very high expectations that have been set by civil society. Many thanks indeed.